All right, everybody, welcome back for another deep dive. Yeah, we're diving deep into the world of workforce management scheduling, WFM. Okay, so let's start with the basics. What exactly are we talking about when we say scheduling in this context? Well, the presentation actually starts with a really straightforward definition. It's all about allocating the right staff with the right skills at the right time to handle the workload. That's WFM scheduling in a nutshell. Okay, that makes sense. But why is that such a big deal? Well, think about it. How many times have you been stuck on hold for like an eternity? Oh, it's yeah. infuriating, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, we've all been there. <laughs> exactly. So effective WFM scheduling is directly tied to shorter wait times, happier customers, and higher customer satisfaction. And ultimately, it helps the company meet those service level agreements, those SLAs. Right. Those SLAs are crucial, but it's not just about keeping the customers happy, right? The agents answering those calls need to be happy, too. Absolutely. If your employees are stressed and overworked, they're not going to be providing the best customer service. Burnout is a huge issue in contact centers, and it directly impacts that bottom line. Makes sense. So how do companies balance the needs of the business, like meeting those SLAs, with keeping their employees happy and engaged? It really is a balancing act, and that's where forecasting comes in. Okay, now this is where it gets interesting. The presentation actually spends quite a bit of time on forecasting call volume. How do they do that? Do they have a crystal ball? Well, not a crystal ball, but they do use some pretty sophisticated data analysis techniques. I'd love to hear more about that. Sure. So they take historical data like past call volumes, average handle times, even things like seasonality or special promotions that might cause a spike in calls. Then they look at call arrival patterns. So are there certain times of day or days of the week when call volumes are consistently higher? You know, everyone calling first thing in the morning or maybe there's a rush after dinner. Like those double peaks you see in coffee shops, right? Yeah. The morning rush and then another one in the afternoon. Exactly. So once they've got all this data, they use different analytical techniques to refine those forecasts and try to make them as accurate as possible. So it's not just a guess. It's based on real data and analysis. That's pretty yeah. cool. But even with the best forecasts, there are always things that can throw a wrench in the plans. Yeah, you've got things like agent absenteeism, meetings, training sessions, all sorts of things that can take agents away from their desks. Right, right. And the presentation refers to that as shrinkage. That's right. And accurately estimating shrinkage is crucial to building a realistic schedule. It's about knowing how much time, on average, agents are unavailable to handle calls. And then there's this whole other concept, occupancy. What's that all about? Occupancy is basically the percentage of time that agents are actually spending on calls, you know, yeah. actively handling customer interactions. So it's like how much of their workday is spent on the phones versus doing other tasks. Exactly. And you have to find the right balance. If occupancy is too high, agents can burn out quickly. But if it's too low, you're not really utilizing your workforce effectively. It's about finding that sweet spot, mm. right, where agents are productive but not feeling overwhelmed. Precisely. And once you've got a handle on forecasting, shrinkage, and occupancy, you can start figuring out how many agents you need at different times of the day. That's where those staffing methods come in, mm -hmm. right? The presentation mentions simple linear and Erlang C. I have to admit, I was a little lost with that part. Oh, yeah. Those are the more technical aspects of it, but they're super important. The simple linear method is straightforward. You take the forecasted call volume, factor in things like average handle time and target service levels, and you get a basic idea of how many agents you need. Okay, that makes sense. What if the Erlang C method? That sounds way more complicated. It is a bit more sophisticated. It's based on something called queuing theory, which takes into account the random nature of call arrivals and how long those calls last. It's more accurate, especially when you're dealing with high call volumes and complex call patterns. So Erlang C is like the advanced level of staffing calculations. You could say that. It recognizes that the real world is messy and that calls don't always arrive in a nice, predictable pattern. Right, of course. Okay, so let's say we've figured out our staffing needs. What happens next? Well, then it's time to actually build the schedule. The presentation talks about day rules and week rules. What are those? Those are all about setting those ground rules for the schedule. Day rules cover things like shift lengths, breaks, meal periods, all that good stuff. You know, making sure you're complying with labor laws and company policies. Right. That's super important. 
And then week rules focus on the bigger picture, things like, you know, what are the shift patterns? How are weekends covered? How does all of this fit together to ensure consistent coverage throughout the week? So it's about creating a schedule that meets the needs of the business, the customers, and the employees. Exactly. And when it's done well, it's a win-win-win situation. Customers get faster, better service, employees have predictable schedules and manageable workloads, and businesses can operate more efficiently and effectively. This has been a fascinating deep dive. I had no idea there was so much that goes into WFM scheduling. Yeah, it's a really interesting field. And, you know, with the rise of artificial intelligence and automation, it's a field that's constantly evolving. Makes you wonder, what's the future of WFM? Will AI be making these schedules for us? It's definitely something to think about. And it raises all sorts of interesting questions about the role of technology in the workplace and how we can use it to create a better experience for everyone involved. That's a deep dive for another day. But for now, thanks for joining us on this exploration of workforce management scheduling. Thanks for having me. And until next time, let's all try to be a little more patient when we're stuck on hold, knowing that there's a whole lot of effort going on behind the scenes to get us to the right place.